another one, ya bastard! Brought to you by supporters who probably have better taste than this schmuck. You have third party companies pop up all the time, it's just something that happens. Most of them though aren't successful, third party is incredibly cutthroat. That kind of cutthroat nature is being seen a lot more in Legends figures these days, especially with the competition between New Age and Magic Square. So breaking into this market is prohibitively difficult. You need a lot of money and a lot of time to establish yourself so you don't run out of it halfway through. If there's any company that could do it, Dr. Wu would be that company. They've already collaborated with McFans toys quite a bit, so the precedent is there. They know what they're doing, and they've made plenty of great upgrade kits over the years. And much like other third-party Legends companies, they did start out making upgrade kits that became their own figures, in a sort of grey area that works quite well, to be honest. But their recent releases have me a little bit curious, because it's tough to survive in this current market. And this ain't a bad figure by any means, but I have to ask, will it survive? In vehicle mode, Dr. Wu has gone for more of a toon-styled Optimus Prime truck, with the sort of rounded windows and the lack of a silver stripe on the side. Personally, I've always preferred the silver stripe, and I get why they probably went with this design, because it is very, very small, and they want to have the detail on the side there. But personally, I always dug the stripes, so it's kind of a bit disappointing to me. That's not to say it's lacking in detail, though, because they've packed a lot of mechanical detail into this thing, all greebled on the side here, and yes, the feet are just kind of sitting at the back there because of the size of this thing. It of makes sense. But they've even gone to the trouble of having a fold-out panel here so that it actually looks a bit more cohesive from the side. A very nice touch. And they've picked out extra silver here and extra silver here and even on the lights. You know, a very nice touch. I also dig that they've gone for a really nice shade of blue with the windows because if you get that wrong you end up with poor class prime from Kingdom and I don't want them to do that. This at least looks pretty neat and they've even added pinned wheels which is something they didn't have to do but it's pretty cool. And yes from the top you can easily tell it's just doing an Optimus, doing the same old transformation you know and may love or may not. But for the most part, they've done a bang up job. It's just a nice and simple Optimus Prime truck. Now that does beg the question though, what is this specifically for? Well, bringing in my favorite modulator, which just so happens to be Grease Pit over here, you can see these are sort of supposed to be compatible with these sort of things. That is how they marketed it. And I have to wonder, is there really a market there? Don't get me wrong, I really, really loved the modulators. They were a really fun gimmick and a wonderful evolution of the weaponizers. But I don't know if anyone was really that into them. Sure, it's cool to have them driving around on these sort of bases, but Doctor Who want to go all out on this series. Is there really that much of a market there? I don't know. Of course, that's only half the marketing. The other half of the marketing is a little more subtle, but I get the feeling these are supposed to evoke the same feel as the smallest transforming Transformers, which we've taken a look at a few times on this channel before. This is where I see a lot of them being discussed in. There are several dedicated STT Transformers groups on the internet, and they're always getting excited for the Doctor Wu lineup. But again, I gotta ask, is there really enough of an audience there? STT fans aren't that great in number. Sure, it's a neat little niche, but I don't know if it's enough to account for this whole thing. And that's not to say this is a bad figure by any means. It's pretty good in this truck mode. But I'm looking at this and I just see the whole Giga Raiden thing all over again, where a figure is pretty good, but there's just not much of an audience for it. Of course, I'm just gonna show off the sizes, showing that he is 5.2 centimeters long, 2 centimeters wide, and 2.5 centimeters tall. But I'm not going to show the size comparisons just yet, because instead I would like to show off the fact that he actually comes with a trailer. The trailer hitch is sort of this tabbed thing that slots into the leg connections here. It is not solid at all, it just kind of sits there, but it does the job well enough. I'm not expecting the most solid connection on the planet for something that's this ruddy tiny. I'm just expecting it to look like a good trailer, and to be honest, this is a pretty good trailer. They've gotten the shade of grey right, and they've gotten most of the details down pat. Yeah, they didn't mould in that nice symbol they usually have, but they at least approximated it, and they've moulded in the lines here as well, instead of just making it one big tampograph. This looks absolutely stunning. The paint here is done really well. The blue is a smidge messy, but it doesn't come across on camera, and this thing is tiny. I can bring out the sign again for this thing because really this is beyond small. And it really, really works well. The blues match up well so it gets a nice bit of cohesion on the bottom. Pinned wheels again and they've even painted the taillights and they've got some wonderful detail back there. They spared no expense in most of the design of this thing. They really went all out. It's not undersized either. The proportions match up very well, unlike some previous examples I've taken a look at. So overall it's a really nice trailer and I'm pretty glad they included it with this. I know a lot of people dislike trailers with primes because they just take 
take up a bunch of space, and I agree with that for the most part, but having it with this set really makes it feel more than just a novelty. Anyway, with this is now being given quite the upgrade in terms of sizing, with 11 centimeters in length, 2.3 centimeters in width, and 3.7 centimeters in height. And of course, just to show how ruddy tiny he is, here he is next to a standard Legion figure, a standard Core Class figure, a standard War for Cybertron Micromaster, and crumbs. Now the transformation doesn't show off anything particularly new, we've all seen it on previous Optimus Primes in the past, whether official or third party, but it's commendable that they all work so well at this scale, because it's still really smooth. First thing to do is to bring up the feet there, just so we don't forget them later, they're on ball joints. Bring out the panels from the sides here and fold them down to the sides, like so, on both sides, like so. Extends the legs on the sliding rails, oh great, sliding rails, my favourite. They do clip in pretty solidly, although I do feel for the longevity of these. But if you bend the legs, you can kind of trick it into staying there, so I guess it's not too big of an issue. Come to the bottom and untab these parts from there. That will allow you to bring out the shoulders and the arms, like so. Same thing on the other side. Then it essentially does what the masterpiece does, which is fold in these two bits here, except without the little folding in thing. If it's without the little folding in thing, I guess it's closer to the classics deluxe. Ew, that thing is terrible. Folds down the torso and peg it into there. Bring up the head like so. Rotate the waist around, or should I say the torso around 180 degrees, and bring the head around, and we are basically done. And in robot mode, yeah, it's a pretty well done Optimus Prime. Definitely better than the core class version, at least. The proportions are much wider and much chunkier due to the fact that he is tiny. Not quite energy on Optimus Prime levels, but definitely a wide boy. But that kind of works for the aesthetic, the chunky aesthetic at such a small scale. Really emphasizes the power he possesses. Head sculpt is really bloody good for the size. You wouldn't expect something this small to look this good with such a good head sculpt, but they've done a bang up job. It's really commendable. Of course, the wonderful window detail carries through as well. Would have loved some silver windshield wipers, but I get why they didn't do it. And the torso works incredibly well too. Lovely that they've painted both sides of the hinge here with the faux grille there, and they've also brought back the nice stripes here. Wish they had that stripe in the vehicle mode, but I get why they didn't want to do it. The yellow is also really well done for the crotch plate here. Yellow is an incredibly hard colour to do, and the fact that they've done this really well, it's commendable. Fists are also painted, and they're on the inside of this thing. Kind of similar to the world's mm. smallest version, but you know, it kind of makes sense. And yeah, you got the kibble on the outside, but this thing is f tiny, what do you expect? And the back's pretty clean too. Yes, you've got the Optimus Prime butt plates that a lot of Legends Optimus Primes have, but it works incredibly well for what it's doing. Even the kibble on the sides doesn't look too bad. The only thing I really find annoying is the big hollow section on the side of the thighs due to how it transforms. I feel maybe figuring out a better transformation for the legs would have really cemented this as a top tier figure, but as it stands, it does a good job. Even the articulation is pretty good. You've got a nice ball jointed head and a torso swivel. Not a waist swivel, but a torso swivel, which still works. Ball jointed shoulders that also have their own dedicated universal joint for full outward motion. That's nice. And ball jointed elbows so that you get the bicep swivel. The ball jointed hips don't end up getting hampered forward. Well, not too much anyway, even though he's got the crotch plate there. Not outwards either. Backwards though, yeah, just a smidge. No thigh swivel though because of how it transforms. But again, this thing is f***ing tiny, so I do kind of get it. I can pretty easily cut this some slack considering it's smaller than a f Legion class figure. 90 degree knee though, and you can sort of cheat an ankle tilt with a ball jointed foot, although it doesn't really have that much stability. They've got a sort of curve on the inside here to try and get it to work, but the stability is not the best. Still, he's very well weighted, so getting him to stand is never an issue. Of course, he also comes with a few accessories, all kept in this little trailer here. The trailer does what you'd expect by opening up at the back, so you can fit no one in there because it's way too f***ing tiny, even for the other Doctor Wu figures, sadly. And of course, it opens up to reveal... Nothing. Okay, seriously, what the f***? Where, where is everything here? This is just really annoying. Why don't they have roller? Like, that's prime opportunity to put a roller in there, no pun intended. And no repair bay? Come on, why is that? You've even got the arms for the repair bay that rotate inwards, but they don't do anything. They even pop off as if they're supposed to peg onto a repair bay, but nope, nothing happens here. It's just a big empty trailer that holds two arms and a gun. That is a massively missed opportunity. The trailer just goes from something that was really cool in vehicle mode to just being dead weight. Can't believe I praised this, sir. Earlier. It's just gone to absolute nothing. Come on, mate. Still, I will give credit where credit is due. The gun does look pretty neat. It sort of clips over the top of the hand as well as the bottom, and it, it works. It, it works fine. It's just a shame that the trailer doesn't do anything because the core bot is doing a lot of work. He's doing great, but it's just not that fantastic on his own. But that ultimately does bring me back to the same criticism. Who is this for? With the smallest transforming transformers, they had the novelty of being recreations of the G1 toys. I don't think this guy 
has enough novelty on his own, and I don't think the series has enough novelty on its own to justify itself. Now, had Doctor Wu's Optimus Prime's trailer done a bit more, yeah, I could have seen it being a more worthwhile purchase. This guy works without a trailer because he is a novelty piece, but there's just not enough novelty here. Doctor Wu Prime is good, but there's not much of a reason to buy him. Anywho, for dimensions, he is roughly 3.8 centimeters by 6 centimeters. And for size comparisons, just so you can see how ruddy tiny he is, here he is next to a standard Legion figure, a standard Core class figure that won't even fit in the frame, a standard War for Cybertron Micromaster, which is essentially the only thing smaller than him, and crumbs. I don't hate this figure by any means. I think it is really, really neat. It has shortcomings, don't get me wrong, but the core is solid, and it's a good base for them to approve upon. My main question is this. Are the buyers there? Are there enough people in this fandom who want this kind of figure, especially with what Magic Square and New Age are offering? Especially since these guys are really, really tiny. You know how people are when they see something really tiny. They keep asking questions about the budget and how much it's worth and all of that jazz. It's basically Metroid Dread, but for Transformers. Doctor Wu has a lot of figures lined up, and I'm really excited for them to release if they release. I'm not sure they're going to get that far. Yes, it's commendable that they all got to the prototype phase, but getting them produced depends on how well these sell. And yes, these do appeal to smallest transforming Transformers fans, but how big is that fandom and how big is the fan base of these guys? Only time will tell, but for now, it's decent. It's not a really strong recommend, but definitely something you can buy if you're interested. Although maybe go for one of the more enticing repaints. I don't really see any of the point of getting another Optimus Prime in your collection. Transformers fans have a billion of them. I think it's time to kind of mix it up a little bit. And on the topic of weird and wacky repaints, let's discuss one tomorrow. I think it's time I finally tackled a mold I've wanted to tackle for quite some time. Yeah, tomorrow we're finally tackling another New Age figure, and hoo boy, I've been excited for this one.